it is Thursday the 5th of May, um, so no Star Wars puns going on today, um, and whereas yesterday was Chris Coop's birthday, today is our dog's birthday, Harley. Um, so happy birthday, Harley. He's in the other room having a cuddle with my wife. Um, but yes, I think, uh, in fact, he might be older than Chris in dog years because he's seven. I can't remember what the maths is. Is it seven years for every year or is it five? I don't know, and I don't know how old Chris is, so I think Harley's probably a bit more mature than Chris, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, um, we shall crack on with two tonight, because tomorrow um, I am actually hosting a wine tasting, so um, I'm going to be very, very careful in terms of the amount that I drink, but I need to do two tonight so that I've got one ahead of myself to be able to then catch up afterwards. So, um, we've pretty much done Campbelltown. I haven't got a hazel burn. Um, and that's pretty much the only one that's left. I think there is a blend, Campbelltown Lock, um, which if anybody's got Campbelltown Lock out there, that would be fantastic. Um, and I got sent this, picked up this yesterday, no, tell a lie, today, um, from a guy called David Lovett. Thank you very much, David, um, who sent this sample in. Um, much appreciated. So we might as well crack on with the, some Highland whiskies to, uh, to get a bit more scotch done. Um, I might take a break I might do a bit of more scotch and then maybe take a break and move on for a bit because I've got um, I've got quite a few kind of world whiskies and American to, to crack on with. So I might rather than try and do a scotch in one big massive go, maybe split it up into chunks. But um, the clientless turned up today. It's as good a reason as any to maybe move from Campbelltown to do some Highland whiskies. Um, and as it is, my next one is not too far away. So. In terms of Highland whiskies, um, we've done Wolfburn, which is right at the top, the most northerly on the mainland. We've done Old Pulteney, which is then a little bit further down. And then this is the next one, if you follow the coast of Scotland down. This is Kleinlish, and this is where the distillery is. Now, when is a distillery not a distillery? When is Kleinlish not Kleinlish? Because this is Kleinlish, and also kind of isn't, because the Kleinlish Distillery was founded in 1819. 1819? I did write this down. Yeah, it was 1819. I thought it, I'd written it down wrong. 1819 by um, the Marquis of Stafford, who became the first um, Duke of Sunderland, Sutherland um, through marriage. And um, so Kleinlish was founded in 1819. Not this Kleinlish. This wasn't. This was actually built in uh, 1967. It gets even more confusing. <clears throat> so, Kleinish was built 1819. Purchased in 1896 um, by a Glasgow based uh, blending company who um, expanded the distillery and then in 1930 was bought by um, Scottish malt distillers who eventually became part of the behemoth that is known as Diageo. Now, in 1967, Another Kleinlish distillery was built literally over the road, quite literally over the road, and it was called Kleinlish. And then the other original Kleinlish was then called Brora. So you've now got two distilleries, and um, Brora, the original Kleinlish, closed in 18, uh, 18, 1983. But for a while, it was actually there was a Kleinlish one and a Kleinlish two, and from my recollection, Kleinlish two was the original Kleinlish. So, um, Brora stroke Kleinlish stroke Brora was m more of a kind of more heavily peated version, whereas uh, the new Kleinlish, which is this, <sighs> really bloody confusing, this isn't it? Is still a bit peaty. It's probably slightly, in terms of PPM, the you know, kind of level of peatiness, smokiness, slightly higher than Highland Park, but not a great deal. I did put the map up of where Kleinlish was, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I put the map up. Because it's it's kind of between Tame, which is where Glenmorangie is, and Wick. Um, it's kind of halfway up that coast. So, this particular one um, is their standard 14-year-old and looks like this. Um, you're looking at about 35 to 40 quid a bottle. I think the uh, the Whiskey Exchange was selling it for 36. It's very, very highly regarded. Um, however, Brora, which I don't have hint hint people, um, is quite hard to get hold of because obviously it closed in 1983 and there are increasingly limited stocks around of it and it is a different beast to this. Um, it is a much more um, it's more heavily peated but it's much more of a kind of a smokiness but there is a coastal element to it as well. 
Um, now, I have had this, but it's quite a while, so I can't actually really remember what it was like, but I do remember it was pretty damn good at the time. I have had a Brora. Um, I was fortunate enough. It was a 1970-something Rare Malt one um, that was pretty phenomenal. But if anybody out there does have a Brora that they could um, potentially spare 2.5 CL of, that would be pretty cool because I can count these two as two separate distilleries, so it would be one another one to tick off the list. Released at 46%. Um, now, a lot of um, Klein Leash goes into uh, Johnny Walker blends, particularly Johnny Walker Gold Label, um, which is one of their more premium ones. Gold Label, you're looking at probably about, mm, I think it's like the 60, 70 quid mark, maybe a little bit less, but it's, it's one of their more premium blends. Straight away, there's a really nice kind of balance of sweetness and gentle smokiness. It's not too full on. It's a combination of sherry and bourbon cast that they mature it in. There's a really nice balance here. There is a, a gentle smokiness. It's not intense. It's not particularly medicinal. It's more of a kind of barbecue, yeah, almost like a barbecuey meatiness along with like a sweet, you know, like you get these sweet barbecue sauces. I'm a, I love barbecue food anyway. Um, and you get these kind of sweet barbecue sauces. And it's, it's a bit like that. It's kind of dishwashers on and it's just shut up. Um, it's kind of like there is a sweety meatiness as well. It's really, really nice on the nose. That is my dishwasher, not my stomach. Mm. Beautiful stuff. The smokiness is, that's there is quite deep, but it's not it's not overpowering. It's almost it's it's kind of uh, it sounds like a really weird terminology to use, but it's deeply subtle in that it's there, it's obvious, it's prevalent, but it's not in your face. It supports everything. There's a lovely caramel sweetness to it, a beautiful fudginess to it. It's really, really well balanced. The 46% is about bang on, because I think any lower probably would just be a little bit too low, might just weaken things out a little bit, but it's got enough oomph behind it to support all the flavors. It's a really, it, the smokiness is fantastic because it's, it's different types of smoke. It's kind of like bonfire and barbecue and a really, really soft cigar smoke. This would go fantastically with cigars. I don't smoke them myself, but obviously you, you get the impression of cigars with, with smelling cigar smoke. And I can imagine this would go fantastically well with a cigar. Really good after dinner malt particularly. Oh, you can just tell instantly with this that there is thought and care behind it. Whether there is or not, they might be sloshing it around at the distillery and just pissing about and not really caring. But it feels, this, this is one of those whiskies that feels like there's care and attention and time and 14 years old is a it's an odd age you know it's kind of like 10 or 12 or, or 15 you tend not to really get anything kind of like 13 14 year old but it's bang on absolutely bang on i can still taste it now and i can still taste this this lovely multi fruity smokiness in my mouth it's lingering but it's a really pleasant lingering um it's just there it's kind of sat at the back of my throat and on my tongue just still going. Don't really need to drink the rest of that because I can still keep tasting it. It's fantastic stuff. I'm going to, obviously, because that would be stupid. Um, oh, it's brilliant. It's lovely complexity. It's a really good whiskey for introducing people to smoky whiskies as well because it's got bags of complexity. It's not overpowering. The smokiness supports all the other flavors that are there. There is a fruitiness to it and there's, there's a sherry sweetness and the fruitiness is, is almost kind of orangey. Um, but it's like, um, oh God, what are those um, fruits that you get that are not like fruit pastels, but you get the kind of like orange jellies fruits. Um, my great grandma used to have them all the time and I can't remember what, uh, for the life of me, what they're called, but they're kind of like coated in a slightly crunchy sugar shell, but it's like actual sugar crystals. Um, but it's a really, it's like a jelly, almost like a hard jelly sweet in it. And it's got that orange jelliness in flavor in there as well as the smokiness, as well as kind of a fudgy maltiness as well. So as an introduction to smoky whiskies, it would be brilliant because there is enough flavors around the smokiness 
that anybody's going to enjoy this and then also go oh I get the smokiness right I understand it now and it's not too full on it's gentle it's subdued but it's there and it's obvious it's brilliant really really good to be honest 36 quid at the whiskey exchange it's a bit of a bargain that really is to be honest superb superb there's there's chocolatiness in that as well it's a bit like I've got something recovered I'm quite a big fan of um, it's like chocolate flavored Ovaltine and it's got some of that in it as well it's almost like a chocolate flavored Ovaltine chocolate orange version with a really 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 mild cigar it's awesome love it really really good uh, David thank you very very much for that um, to spare some of that, something that good, is extremely generous, and I'm very, very grateful um, to you for it. Um, and yeah, I do think that 36 quid for that is an absolute ruddy bargain. It's brilliant stuff. Um, so get hold of it if you can. Uh, I'm gonna rinse everything out. We'll crack on with the next one. We're gonna go a little bit further down the coast. We're gonna go past Glenmorangie, because we've done that, and then just uh, take, a, take a right, and uh, we'll go on to the next one. So I'll see you then. Cheers.